Hey, welcome to one of our educational videos and today is going to be epic. This is amazing in that I have every Kriegoff Luger variation from 1935 to 1945 along with some commercials. I don't think ever in history, and please correct me if you know I'm wrong, I don't know of any time in history that anyone has had all the variations in one room at one time. So for example, I know Rock Island Auction has had all of these at one time or another, but I don't know that they've ever had all of these at one time. So that's why I call this an epic video. I'm very proud to bring this to you. Um, and so let me go through it. I'm going to give a broad brush. There's a lot of detail that I'm not going to go into because it's just too, too much information and most of you just need a broad brush. So we're going to go from pre-war, early Kriegoffs, pre-war, early Kriegoffs, to wartime Kriegoffs, all the way to 1945. Uh, then we have a post-war Kriegoff. Uh, over here we have commercial Kriegoffs and I'm going to tell you about a complete rig. So that's where we're going. Hang on, grab a drink, and have a seat. So let's uh, go over the history of the Kriegoff factory. I've already done this on previous videos, so I'm just going to give you a broad brush overview again, just on the history. Heinrich Kriegoff uh, was in business of making military equipment for the German uh, Imperial Army. Uh, but then uh, when the Nazis came to power, he actually was good friends with Hermann Goering. They were hunting buddies, and they were truly cl close friends. Originally, the Krigoff factory was owned by the Simpson family, and I think I mentioned in another video, the Simpson factory made Lugers between the wars during the Weimar period. But because Mr. Simpson was Jewish, his family was forced to leave Germany, and probably a good thing for them, because otherwise they probably would have been killed. Um, but the, the factory was seized by the government. Uh, we talked about the Reich's, fi uh, Reich's Finance Bureau. They would actually seize the property of the Jews, and then they would sell it to Aryans. In this case, because of Goering's association, he was able to finagle uh, the gifting or the uh, sale of the Simpson factory to Krigoff. Now, the, Krigoff, the Krigoffs always wanted a contract to make Luger, so this was an ideal uh, business opportunity for them. Uh, and they took full advantage uh, sometime in, 19, in the 1930s, and then they began production of, of the Krigoff Luger. Many of the parts came from the Simpson factory, so you see a lot of similarities between the Simpson and the Krigoff, particularly the early variations. Let's take a look at the first variation. So I'd love to do uh, close-ups and, and detailed photographs of every single one of these Lugers, but I, I, we're just not going to have time for that. Um, this one is a G-code, and G-code, just like in the Mauser factory, G stood for, uh, it was the code for 1935. So this gun was made in 1935. Um, the G is slightly different. Let me show you. You can see the Krigoff G is skinnier than the uh, Mauser G. And so therefore, if somebody took a Mauser uh, receiver and tried to put a Krigoff toggle on it, uh, and believe me, that's been done and tried to fool the public because these are very, very rare, uh, try to make this into a Krigoff, uh, they could make uh, about $10,000 doing that. But the Gs are different. Uh, so this is the Krigoff Luger from 1935. It has a G code on the receiver. This one comes with a matching magazine. It has the Krigoff proof mark and the number 95, which is the serial number of this gun. Uh, one interesting note is there is another uh, 95. There is a G-Date 95, which was a Mauser gun. Now it is a Krigoff gun, or at least it was for a short period of time, and it is uh, now known to be a fake. I, I actually saw it at a gun show. I knew I already had number, number, number 95. I knew there couldn't be two of them. Uh, so we had a couple people examine it and determine that the other one was a fake. Uh, before I go any further, I keep talking about the Krigoff proof. And some of you are left scratching your heads because you're not sure what the Krigoff proof looks like. Uh, this is a book by um, Randall Gibson. It's probably, it's, it's now, it's been out for quite a while. So I have a lot more serial numbers than he had. Most of the information I'm going over today is found in this book, and I've done research. He has since passed away, 
uh, but a lot more research has been done on Krigoffs. And if we go to page 95, which actually, that's the serial number of my first gun, you can see the Krigoff uh, firing proofs or test proofs. And these were uh, specifically for the Luftwaffe. So it was a Luftwaffe inspector who was stamping these. And you see the early one, the little circle, that's a small L with a two. So we often call this the L2 proof. And then you see it morphs a little bit. The L2 becomes bigger. Um, the wings become a little different. And then finally, there's a tiny little L2 proof. So as I go through these, I'm, I'm going to talk about the early and late, later stamps. And by the way, these are not the only stamps. There's probably four or five different stamps. But these are the main Luftwaffe proof stamps, also known as the L2 proof. So as I go through this, I will be pointing out um, early, early stamps versus the later stamps. Before I move on to the next one, it's should, I should note that you'll notice the early ones had wooden grips. It was probably the first 2000 that had these wooden grips. They're very, very rare to find. They're not the same. I can tell by looking. Um, you probably can't because you don't see hundreds of these, hundreds of grips. Um, but this, the, um, the checkering is a little bit wider and the grip, when you hold the grip, it's a little bit thicker. So these are distinctly um, Krigoff wooden grips and very, very rare. Um, on the 35, there was, it's estimated less than 50 were made. And uh, to this date, there's only six that are known, um, six real ones that are known and a couple of fakes that I have seen. So um, that's a very rare, probably most of you didn't even know about the G-code Krigoff. Then uh, the next variation is the S-code Krigoff. It doesn't have the white uh, wax pencil in it, so it's, it might be a little harder to see. Um, you can also see that the toggle changed a little bit. The first variation of toggle, you can see the serial number there in only Sewell, whereas the S code, they have um, no, no serial number and Krigoff Sewell. On the S code variation, by the way, there's actually three sub variations. I won't go into all three, I do have all three. Um, but there's uh, early, middle, and late. Um, so, for example, I wanted to show you this one because from the wooden grip, we go to what we call the Ritz grip. And the reason that we call it a Ritz grip is if you open it up, there's a, um, the factory logo for Ritzman. Ritzman factory made this fine checkered Bakelite grip. So it's, it's a beautiful uh, red, red brown, or also known as blood red grip with fine checkering. And this is also an S code with the uh, second style toggle. These, by the way, um, they were originally issued with two matching mags. Uh, most of these guns, not all of them, most of them have one matching mag. All of them will have the L2 proof and then the serial number. These are heavily renumbered to match. And you really need somebody who's expert at this to examine them because they're done very well. It does add a lot to the value to have two original matching mags. Um, if we skip over here, you can see wherever I have two mags, like here and here, these are two matching mags. Everything else is most likely one matching mag. But let's, let's move along. Actually, as I, look, uh, as I move along, let me point out one other thing. You'll notice that these all have straw parts, and even when we go all the way to 1945, you can, that's in 1945, you see they, they had the straw parts. The Mauser factory did away with straw parts, but also notice that fire blue all the way to 1945. But if we just take a quick scan, this is the opposite side of the mag release button. So you see all the straw on there. You also see an externally marked side plate. Uh, so very early straw, but when you turn it over, some people who re -blew them don't realize that that's fire blue. If you see that as straw color, it's most likely been re-strawed or re-blued. You see the blue, fire blue, fire blue, fire blue, all of them have that same characteristic. So that's, that's one way to tell an original uh, Krigoff. One other way, thing that you want to look at is you'll notice this has a matte or dull finish. The ear, the, uh, the receiver and this rail is all high polished, 
but here and through here on the frame, the inner ear is all matte finish. And you'll see that on all of these. Let's do this one. You see the high polish, flat finish. Again, if it's reblued, it's going to be all high polish, most likely. I also mentioned the proof. There's actually three distinct proofs here. You see the early proofs and different variations of early proofs. Also on the barrel is an L2 proof. Uh, when you open these up inside, now they no longer numbered them on the exterior. The early variations, they numbered them. But if I take this side plate off, on the inside will be the last two digits on the inside of the side plate. It just makes it look a little bit nicer to put it inside. And if I open this up, you'll see L2 proofs, Krigoff proofs on the firing pin, uh, underneath the hold open. A lot of times the hanger or the coupler is uh, L2 proofed. The toggle links are all L2 proofed. So you'll see Krigoff proofs throughout. Maybe not a lot of matching numbers, but at least all Krigoff parts will generally have the L2 proof. So this next one is also an S code. The only reason I have it here is because after about 2500, we went from the Ritz, remember the Ritz script, which is distinctly fine checkering. We now go to a little bit different color, but it's, it's the regular checkered grip that you would see like on a Black Widow. Black Widow, of course, has a black grip. Um, and, but this is the style you see. This is the style checkering that you see. And so Krigoff went from the fine checkering to the standard checkering, we'll call it. And it's consistent with what you would find on a Black Widow. See, the, it's standard checkering versus the Ritz grip fine checkering. These are fairly rare. I have extra pairs of these if somebody needed them, uh, but they are hard to find. And by 2500, they started to transition to this standard grip. This is also an S code. It's got the uh, second variation of toggle and the side plate would be numbered internally. This comes with a matching magazine, which has the L2 proof, by the way, it's only up here. I saw a fake recently had a stamp here, stamp here. Also, it's usually upside down. Um, if the number is th the numbers this way, the L2 proof is stamped upside down, upside down L2 proof. Now, later on, they do them right side up and then go upside down again. But when in doubt, please ask. All right, let's move to the next variation. So we've done the G code and the S code. What I didn't mention is um, this is 1935 G code. S code is code for 36. So these are all 1936. And um, in 1936, then, they also went to a... 36 variation. They actually put the last two digits of the date. Um, so this, no, this is known as the uh, 36 variation. And uh, everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, interestingly, this one comes with Ritz grips. That's the way it came to me. I didn't switch them out. It's early enough. Actually, uh, this is 4,500. So somebody, uh, I would assume that they still had Ritz grips in the factory. Um, they weren't uh, very anal about making sure that they had the exact grip for the exact gun. So that you will see variations, but generally, they, this, this grip would have been on an earlier gun. I don't swap them out. If this is the way they came, I assume this is the way they came from the factory. Uh, one other comment, these are fairly rare. The 36 was only a short period of time, um, and there was only about 500 of these made. Um, as opposed to the S codes. And again, there's three variations of S codes, but of the S codes, there's about 4,000, which is the, the most common um, variation is the S code Krigoff. About 4,000 and probably at least 400 of them known, as opposed to the, S, the uh, 36 code, there's only 500 made, uh, still in 1936, of course, and I believe there's only about 40 of these known. So not that common. Uh, they then went from a two-digit two 36 to a 1936. So here they put the entire date. And again, this is a fairly common variation because there's about 3,000 of these made. So 1936 um, as opposed to S code, which was 4,000. So all in all, 1936 is the year that Krigoff put out the most Lugers. Um, all told, you know, most of the Lugers you find are going to be 
1936 S code. We've got two matching magazines with the upside down L2 proof. You're also noticing here that these are all nickeled mags. Uh, just goes to the quality of uh, construction. They used uh, nickel magazines. Um, and of course, if this is 1936, then the ma next variation will be 1937. And lo and behold, there it is. 1937. Beautiful gun. You'll notice the L2 proofs, the distinct Krigoff proofs. These all come in 9mm, by the way. 9mm Luger. All of these guns, all the military guns are 9mm, no exception. This one comes with a matching magazine. These, these magazines, by the way, quality made, these are Hanel magazines, um, and they made a lot of the police mags as well. You see the L2 proof upside down. Uh, 1937, obviously next is 1938, but let's pause for a minute because um, let's do the production. 1938 is very rare. 1937, they made about 2,500. So again, we went from uh, 30, uh, about 7,036 to only 2,500 made in the entire year of 1937. But once we get to the 1938, this is actually a really rare bird. Um, you'll notice this last proof. That's the first time we see that later, if you go back to the book, you see that later L2 proof. 1938, we begin to see that later L2 proof. And in this year, there was only 50 made. Um, I bought this gun, I was at a gun show, and the, somebody came up to me because they knew Legacy Collectibles. This is going back eight years ago. And they said, there's a guy here with a, a Krigoff Luger, and he wants, he wants I, I forgot what, it was like $8,000. He wants $8,000 for a Krigoff Luger. And I said, uh, I, I'm interested, but that's too much money. I, I'm not going to pay $8,000 for it. Um, that's a little bit high at the time. And uh, I went over to him anyway and said, so what do you got there? Uh, <laughs> and it was a 1938. Only 50 made. Of, of these, this variation, there's only 17 known guns. And I picked one up. I actually uh, paid full price and got a deal. Um, I think these are worth between 15000 and 18000 This one comes with a matching magazine. Um, and now, uh, in production-wise, we're, we're, uh, the serial numbers are going to be over 10000 So this one is in the 10000 range. Matching magazine, upside-down proof. And we've already discussed the fact that for the first time, we're seeing the later Krigoff L2 proof. Okay, uh, so we just, we just talked about the 1938, and now there would be a gap because there are no Krigoffs from 1939. Uh, that may not be true. There is one. There is one 1939 um, Krigoff, but it is a known fake. So if you see one, it's, if, it's always possible that there's one out there, um, but there's no known 1939s. Now, why did they stop making them, or why did they only make 50 this year? and none the next year. Well, keep in mind that Krigoff was making a lot of other things. This is a relatively small contract. Of all of these Krigoffs that they made, uh, it total is less than 12,000. That's about what Mauser made in one month. So in 10 years, from 35 to 45, they only made about 12,000 Lugers. And so on certain years, they prioritized other things. So for example, here's a double barrel Luftwaffe flare pistol. This is dated 1941, and you see the proof mark. That's an L2 Luftwaffe proof mark. So this is a Luftwaffe inspector-approved flare pistol. So this might be with a bomber uh, or a plane. If it's down, they know to shoot off a flare when the, uh, when the friendlies are coming to rescue them. Uh, they also made the famous FG-42 machine gun which is prized among collectors, one of the best machine guns ever made. For people who shoot machine guns, they tell me the top of the line is the FG-42. Okay, so we skipped 1939. My, my belief is there were none made, but in uh, 1940, uh, they picked up production again. Now, it's important to note in 1940, there's the date, 1940 Krigoff. It's important to note that you see we went from the red grip to a black grip. Uh, early 1940s still had the red grip, and sometime about halfway into production, they, they switched to the black grip. 
A lot of my collector friends, um, I've actually sold two uh, 40s with a red grip, and they've asked me to swap the grip to black. Um, I reluctantly will do that. <laughs> I'll tell them that I don't think they should, but um, people like the black grip. It looks like a Black Widow. Uh, the difference being this has the straw parts. Uh, Black Widow, of course, would be all blued. Um, this has the straw parts, and then it has the fire blued. This is just a beautiful gun from 1940. This one comes with two matching mags, and we still see the upside down L2 proof. Uh, but you'll notice that we went from nickel, uh, nickel mag and lower production costs. They used a blue mag, and most of the 1940s you'll see will have the black grip. You'll notice on the 1940, we then see the, we, we're consistently now seeing the later variation of L2 proof, slightly different. They actually have an early proof followed by a later proof, and um, the magazine has an earlier proof on it. Uh, we now go to 1941, and this is a rare gun indeed, because 1941 is one of those years that many collectors believe they did not make any Krig offs. The reason that theory is prevalent is because there's only two or three known. Uh, one of the known guns was later proven to be a fake. So when you only have two or three known, and one of them is uh, turns out to be a fake, the fact that this one exists, I can't say 100% for sure that this is not right. But if, if it is, it's certainly, there is probably less than 20 made uh, in 1941. So very low production year. We could say that maybe none were known. Uh, this is in the 11,000 range. It has all the right characteristics, um, but whether or not it is a, uh, an actual gun or something that somebody made up, it would be hard for me to say 100% for sure, um, but this would be a very rare Krigoff indeed. Nonetheless, there's only about a thousand in 1940, uh, maybe only a couple in 1941. Uh, 1942, 1942 Luger, this is a known variation for sure. Uh, there is about 300 made. And um, for the rest of these variations, they're all about two to 300 made. So every year from 42 till 45, there's only um, two to 300 made. Uh, again, comes in nine millimeter. Uh, you see the black, black Widow grips, but it's actually a Krigoff. You see the straw small parts, and that's fire blued. This one comes with two matching mags, and then the upside down L2 proof. So um, only 300 made, and probably only 20 or 30 known to exist today. A lot of people calling me all want the war years, but these can easily, well, Rock Island, uh, which gets unbelievable prices. Um, they sold a couple of these later guns, uh, 42, 43, 44, in the 35,000 range. Um, I, I'm, I'm probably um, selling these at about 15,000, as opposed to the early ones that are more common. Um, I can, you can find them with not matching magazines for uh, 5,000 or a little bit less. More commonly, they're gonna be 6,000 to 6,500. What comes after 42? Of course, 1943. Again, about 300 made. We haven't looked at the proof marks in a while. Let's take a look. Now you can see a later, later Eagle L there. The serial number now is still in the 11,000. This is 11,700. Um, and this one comes with two matching, uh, excuse me, it's not two matching mags. Uh, one of them is close to matching and the other is matching. Uh, but I'm showing you this because uh, right in, the, in these later war guns, the, uh, for some reason, some of them are right side up and some of them are upside down. I don't know that that was, on, uh, I think it was on purpose or they had a new guy who came in and didn't realize, hey buddy, you're supposed to do it upside down. And so they switched back to being upside down later on. So it's a little bit of a mixed bag. Again, when in doubt, take close-up pictures and send them to me, and I'll give you my best judgment. Um, uh, before I move on to 44, uh, all that is to say, uh, you know that I keep serial numbers for, um, for Walders, uh, PPs and PPKs. If you have serial numbers for Krigoffs, if you have a Krigoff, send me the serial numbers. I, I'd like to add to my database. I have a couple thousand uh, recorded. And if somebody is messing with these guns, 
it's good for me to know that so I can make record of it. And then when they come up for auction and you're thinking about buying something, uh, you can check with Legacy Collectibles and we'll give you our best feedback. Let's jump into 1944. Uh, now we're get almost to the end of the war. But notice the quality of production is the same as it was in the beginning. We've got later proof marks. We've got straw small parts. We've got the same Krigoff logo. We've got fire blue on the other side of the button. Um, just beautiful quality, high polish finish, which you don't. You don't really see uh, in Mauser where the production, well, um, in 1944, they weren't making them anymore. This last time they made the Krig off at Mauser was in 1942. So now they're putting out P38s. And if you've seen a 44 P38, the, uh, the finish is a very dull uh, matte finish. Uh, some of them are phosphated, which was a much cheaper finish. Krig off was still making quality guns, which is why they sell for such a premium. Now let's go to the, uh, other than the 41, this is probably the most controversial uh, Krigoff on the table. Uh, the reason being, this is a 1945 uh, Krigoff. People debated whether they actually made any Krigoffs in 1945. Gibson's book estimates there was about 200 made, but there are a lot of people, especially in Europe, that say they never made them in 1945, and that's because they only showed up uh, 45 Lugers started showing up in the United States in the 60s, 70s, 80s, while the collectors in Europe say, why is it we're not seeing them in Europe? Um, and so there's always this theory that somebody in the United States was making them. And then um, a guy in California passed away. And when the collectors, uh, the auctioneers came in to uh, pick up his inventory from, from his widow, uh, they went down in the basement and they found a workroom with all the dies to make a 45 Luger and various 45 Lugers in various stages of assembly. So we know for a fact from those anecdotal records, <laughs> um, we know for a fact that some of the 1945s were faked. Still, with that knowledge, people go to auction and regularly will pay $40,000, 50000 for a 1945 Krigoff. Uh, this one, you can see, has the late L2 proofs, beautiful straw. On top of that, this one has the plum finish to it, which some collectors absolutely love. I, for one, love the plum finish. And all that is, it's not a different, um, it's not a different bluing. It's actually how they heat and prepare the metal that causes that plum color. We see that in the Mauser factory, in the Walder factory. It's not unimaginable that the same thing would have happened at Krigoff, so that by itself does not make this um, a fake gun. But if you look at the proofs here on the rail, um, also on the barrel, serial numbers in the 13,000 range, uh, which all the 45s are found in the 13,000 range. There's about 15 to 20 uh, known 1945s again, uh, typically found only in the United States. This one came with a, uh, a Black Widow bottom magazine, which other ones that I've seen have the same magazine. Some of them are numbered right here on the spine, um, but I, I just can't say for sure that this is real. It is controversial, but when these come to auction, they regularly sell for forty to $50,000. If this one is 1945, then what the heck can this possibly be? <laughs> uh, well, this is uh, typically known as a PX gun. You can see right away, see how dull that finish is? Um, at the end of the war, the GIs wanted souvenirs. Uh, my own father-in-law went over to Germany, but in 1946 or 1947, he did not bring back any Lugers, but he did say the company PX had all kinds of souvenirs from the war that the GIs would come and buy and then send them home and tell their, their great-grandchildren that look what I took from a dead SS officer, when in fact it came from the PX. This is, the only way we know this is Krigoff, there's no markings on the outside, but when I take it apart, the inside toggle, inside parts are all Krigoff marked. We also know that Krigoff was the only factory still making Lugers at the end. Mauser had long gotten rid of them. In fact, Mauser sent the, at the spare parts to Krigoff, so at the end of the war, the soldiers would pay uh, the local workers to put together Krigoffs. So you can see this is all dull finish. Um, 
no, no toggle, no date, no markings here, uh, no Krigoff toggle, but inside we can see it is Krigoff proof. So it is known as a, um, a PX gun. Also, the serial number is 23. The font is a little bit different. All of the PX guns that I've seen are all under number 200. So I've seen from one to close to 200. Um, so I think they only made um, a couple hundred of these PX guns, sold them in Germany at the end of the war. This one actually comes with a matching mag. By the way, the internal parts are also number 23. And of course there is no Krigoff proof because this is not the Luftwaffe. It went to a US GI, brought back to the United States, bought at the, P, the, the base PX. I only have a little bit more to go here. I wanted to tell you what a rig looks like. Um, the Krigoff holster uh, has a slightly different cut. I won't go into the detail, but this is cut slightly different than most other holsters. Also, the stitching is black, and there will be no markings on the back, uh, so it should be totally blank. The only marking on a Krigoff holster, which makes it distinct, is you see the L2 Krigoff proof on the inside. This one happens to be in excellent condition and goes together with one of these guns. Um, this one is also uh, black stitching, slightly different cut, and an L2 proof, Krigoff proof on the inside. It's the only place you'll see it is right in there. I've been, again, I've gone to gun shows where somebody has a, uh, commercial, a commercial holster for sale, $200. And I'll open it up and see that Krigoff proof and I'll say, sold. <laughs> no markings on the back again. This person, see that little, that's somebody who put a price tag on it and had it out on the table. I hate it when they do that because then it doesn't come off. But so the, the rig would consist of the gun, uh, spare magazine, and also the tool. Uh, this one I noticed uh, has the Krigoff tool. Um, this tool is you know, you would, would probably at a show would just pass it by, but that is the very late um, Krigoff proof. A Krigoff tool will have one of the L2 stamps, at, same as you see on the gun. So the early, the mid, and the late Krigoff stamp will be found on the tool. The tool alone will sell for $400, sometimes higher. Uh, but we've sold them in the $400 range. That's a, a correct Krigoff tool. Looks almost just like a little nick in there. But um, you'll f um, I like the ones that have the earlier Krigoff stamp. Uh, let's move on to, we did all the military variations, but Krigoff did make some commercial guns. This one, we did a whole video. Uh, there, here's a link that you can go and look at this video. This is a factory engraved nickeled or platinum finish. I believe uh, this is in a book as a platinum finish. It does have some gold inlay. And this was a presentation uh, probably ordered by Goering to give out to one of his officers or somebody that worked under him or a very special friend. But this is actually, uh, this exact gun is in the book by Randall Gibson that blue book I showed you. Uh, this, I did a whole video on this and another engraved gun. Uh, this will have the matching serial number, but you won't find a Krigoff proof because it never went to the Luftwaffe. It was a commercial gun sold to a special friend of Hermann Goering's. Maybe it was his, I can't claim it was his, but I do believe he ordered that gun from his friend Heinrich Krigoff. Here's two more commercial guns. I just want to mention the commercial guns. Uh, if we go back to the book, you'll see that the commercial guns come with a star. This star looks a lot like the French star that are found on many P-38s, but it's not. It is just a commercial proof that Krigoff used. And if we go back to these two guns, um, this one, you can see the commercial star. And the other way you know a commercial gun serial number will have a P in front of it. So the commercial guns will have a P. They usually are fairly early and, uh, and they do come in 30 caliber and nine millimeter. Take a quick look at this. You can see the one on my right is 30 caliber. The one on my left is nine millimeter. Also, you'll notice this one. Uh, th there's no date on the chamber, so it's hard to date them. Very few of the commercial guns will be inscribed. 
Um, not sure why, but I'm sure they had to special order that. Uh, it was scribed with uh, the Krigoff and the, the location of the factory. This is Crown N, so we know it was made probably 38 or 39. And the next one we see is Eagle N, so we know it was made 1940 or later. The fact that it has the earlier grips, I would say this gun was made in 1940, but because there's no chamber date, we can't say for sure. Most of these were made earlier. Uh, later on, they were just making uh, guns for the Luftwaffe, and so commercial sales were less important. Uh, if we look at the characteristics, we see straw, we see fire blue. Everything else is exactly the same, but instead of Krigoff proofs, it has the star proof uh, for a commercial gun and will always have P. The P stands for private, so this was a private sale. Um, commercial guns, uh, for the most part, most people want the military, although these are very, very rare. They only probably made a few hundred. And again, they did make them in a longer barrel. They have uh, the four inch barrel and then they have one that's uh, more like a six inch barrel. Uh, and they made them in nine millimeter and 30 cal, which I already mentioned, different size barrels, some inscribed, some not inscribed. But there's only a few hundred of those made. So they are very desirable, but um, don't command as big a premium because they never went to the Luftwaffe. Now, I have one lonely gun still left on the table, so what the heck can this be? Um, I might as well put in with all of these the KU Luger. Uh, this Luger has been a mystery for many years, um, but they, they have characteristics of Mauser parts, but they always have a KU in the front. Um, I don't know the exact meaning of KU. There's a lot of theories. Um, basically, we think that it means reworked. Um, you'll see it's a BYF Mauser. 41, but you'll also see there's a Krigoff proof right here. And there's usually one on the barrel, other side of the barrel, there's a Krigoff proof there. Now, most of the research and what Gibson says in his book, most of the research indicates that um, in 1942, we know that Mauser stopped making the Luger Krigoff was the only one still making the Luger, so they sent all of these spare parts, all of these Mauser parts went to Krigoff. Krigoff then assembled these, and after final assembly, the Luftwaffe stamped them for acceptance to the Luftwaffe. So the KU variation is typically um, thought to be another Krigoff put together pistol from leftover Mauser parts. If I took this all apart, you would find Krigoff stamps on the inside um, throughout the gun. So Mauser, Mauser leftover parts put together by Krigoff went to the Luftwaffe. This one is, is special and in my collection because it also comes with two matching magazines. The KU Luger typically comes with a black bake like uh, bottom. Very rarely you'll see them numbered to the gun. Uh, the reason being is um, I, I can, I can do some forensic study really quickly by saying when you try to put that number on there, it often will crack this. This is very brittle. And so I've seen them number with chunks broken off of it. And so what I think happened is early on they said, hey, let's, let's number the, the, the uh, magazine bottoms to match. But very quickly they realized that it just cracked them. And so most times you'll see just blank uh, bake-like bottoms. But if you do see a, a KU with a, um, a matching bottom, in this case, two matching bottoms, that would make this very, very rare. Um, you'll see that Krigoff did not do what they typically did. Uh, Mauser did, did not use straw parts. And so when Krigoff put this together, they didn't refinish it. They used the original finish. You don't see the Krigoff straw parts or fire blue. You see the Mauser... Uh, just plain blue finish. If I take this grip off, it'll have the full serial number inside of both panels. Full serial number. Mauser never did that, but Krigoff did that on these guns. So this is known as a KU Luger, which is Mauser parts put together by Krigoff. Hey, now that was an epic video. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. Uh, several of you are thinking right now, I'll never be able to afford one of these. Well, keep in mind that I said the same thing. Never say never. Uh, maybe one day you'll be in the market to buy one. And if you do, please check us out. I always have um, some Krigoffs for sale. 
and would love to help you pick one out that would be right for your budget. Um, and for those of you who already have Craig Ops, please send me your serial number so I can update my database. Uh, we'll talk about the different characteristics to make, it all, make sure it's all correct. But um, uh, most importantly, make sure you pass this along to a friend, like and subscribe to our channel because I'm going to be bringing you more videos real soon.